It's Masters Week. Masters Week? Masters Week. You're, you're getting a master's degree? No, sir. No, absolutely not. Definitely not me. What is a master's week? Golf, man. Oh, the, first the sign of, master's. Yes, okay. the first sign of spring for all in the New England states. Tigers out there. I've watched hours of golf already today. Uh, the homie Valerie, is uh, she, she's never seen this before. So she's about to get it. I did. I did inform her that I only do this one, one time a year. It's only one weekend, once a year. Um, I am keeping it to myself that U.S. Open Week is often similar, but hopefully she misses this episode of the podcast, and uh, you know she can just feel like that might be a one-off. Also, with the Open, that's another time. Uh, I can do without the PGA. I don't need it. I think, really? Yeah, yeah. I can do without the PGA Championship. It, it doesn't uh, shimmy my jams in the least. But like I say, hopefully she doesn't listen to this episode. But we're so glad that you are here to listen to this episode. We've got a lot to talk about today on 40K Fanatics. My name is Shane. That is Casey. Casey, say hi to the lovely people. Hello, lovely people. I'm Casey, your local lore master, and that's Shane, your lovely game master, and we're here to talk about golf. Golf. And Blood Bowl. And Blood Bowl. And Old World. And Old And World. Age of Sigmar. And 40K. This may be the rare time where there's very little 40K talked about. You know, I just had thought, if they've got Blood Bowl, why don't they make a golf version? Would that be cool? Would you play that? I mean, I don't know how a golf board game would work. I mean, you know, what? I'm probably some, thinking of it in the video game perspective and less of the board game perspective. That well, might be my issue. some say that golf is quite boring, and I imagine that making a golf board game would be exponentially so. Now, I disagree, obviously, with the entire premise that golf is boring, as it is the only sport that I am uh, qualified to play at 5'6", 160. Not very fast. I mean, I've played a lot. Look, I'm a jack of all trades when it comes to just about anything. I've tried countless sports, mainly uh, non-skill sports. And I've got the arthritis, muscle damage, and tendon damage to uh, prove it. So, Bona fides. Oh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a veteran. <laughs> Sco- <laughs> That's a weird... Yeah, um, I got the... I got the I don't have the skills. Jack of all trades, master of none. Never been a 9 out of 10, never been a 10 out of 10. I've been an 8. But, uh, yeah, it hurts to walk. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible job. Got to be careful, man. Got to stay away from those contact sports. Ah uh, man, got to yeah. keep, got to keep you, got to keep your head clear and your mind sharp to remember all these rules that you're about to get in your new upcoming Oryx Codex. Thank you. There have yeah. been reveals therein. Uh, a couple of your, a couple of your detachments. Whispers have been in the warp. Yes. Uh, go check out the Warp Arm articles because we won't cover them fully until the Codex comes out because I feel like that makes more sense. But a couple of the detachment rules have been revealed, and one of them is uh, just designed around a horde of boys so that the boys will be more durable. So that Classic. The, so that they will be more easily delivered to their target since they essentially have no shooting whatsoever. Uh, I think that's going to be fun. That's the one that everybody, you know, all the all the sweaty tryhards are saying is going to be the most busted. I guess I guess maybe we'll, we'll have to see, won't we? The, yeah, one, yeah. the one that interests me the most is the one that has to do with, like, the mechs and the tanks and the things of that, that sort. That is what I was just talking to you right before we started. I am so excited. I'm so excited. It's going to be great. The uh, the detachment rule, if I'm not mistaken, is called uh, try that button or something to that effect. And I've literally... How many times have I told you that they need, like, an auto-explode strat? What have I told you that that strat needs to be talk, like titled? Not that but it's not that button, <laughs> and they stole my idea. Oh, do they? Ha- does it have an auto explode? I wish. I don't. Th- I haven't seen that yet. But I, I, I only man. I only glanced through the uh, through the article because orcs are not my bag, and when they come out, I'm sure that I'm going to get a good look at your codex. Maybe I'll borrow it for for a night and uh, read over the whole thing. Yeah, more than the cards too. Yeah, you got to have the cards. Why wouldn't 100%. you have the cards? Hundred hundo p. Uh, but. Uh, I love the chaos of try that button because on one you on a roll of a d6, one, two, three, four, five, six, you get a different um, additional ability to your weapons 
And, uh, you know, your heavy metagamers don't like that because it's hard to plan for. But me being here for fun, that is quite, quite fun. And you'll like this. We also are getting new crusade rules. Yeah, every codex has come with crusade rules. Yeah, uh, we harped on that in the last video. Yeah, if you haven't seen it or listened to it, uh, check it out over on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcast or anywhere you get your various uh, 40K Fanatics information. Uh, go check it out. Last week's episode was my review of the Pariah Nexus Crusade book. And when we open the bits box, I'll have some stuff to talk about with that. Yeah, and... Uh, I'm going to be honest, I am definitely going to be, uh, I think I'm definitely going to go for the Dread Mob, and uh, as you said, try Dead Button, I mean, rolling a D6 and getting three different types of abilities, it's kind of like, what, what? what's that thing you have, a uh, warp? No, it's like your bubble chucker. It is. It's an entire detachment of your bubble chucker. I love Which my is bubble great, chucker. because we always love seeing what bubble pops out. And if it is in any way appropriate for the target. Yeah, and I love making my, my killer cans just even more sporadic. Because you already roll to see if they shoot the enemy or they shoot a nearby orc unit, and that's going to make it even more unpredictable. It's going to be great. It's going to be orky fun chaos. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have got, now in the middle of April, the March for McCrag contest results where Casey and I painted a space marine. We encourage you all to sp paint a space marine. But to go on our social handles on X, on Instagram, on Facebook, and vote for your favorite one. And Casey, what are the results of those polls? Yeah, so we've been chilling pretty hard for those votes, but the tally has finally been added up uh, in our local community as well as on social media. I have collected 19 votes. So, with a whopping 12 votes, uh, actually, I'm just going to say, one was an Emperor's Spear, and the other one was a Mortifactor. Uh, you may have seen the pictures of them on all of our social media. They're pretty dope looking, if I must say. One is very blue. Dabu D, Dabu Dai. <laughs> and uh, as the results are, we have 12 votes for one, seven votes for another. Coming no. up to 19 votes. I'm feeling good about this one, I'm afraid. You're, you're feeling, feeling pretty I am, good. You're feeling, I am, but we'll uh, see. We have a winner in the Emperor's Spear. Oh, no kidding. Yep, the Emperor's Spear won That's it. That's wild. Took the trophy. I thought I had that one uh, with my yeah. Mortifactor. Yep. So now we reveal to you, I, actually, I think most of you knew. I think we might have spilled the beans on this one prematurely. Did we? I think early on, our our uh, oh, everyday man. listeners would have would have probably known who's who. The people uh, who have you know, been seeing our stuff. Yeah, that non -stop, too. Non-stop, yeah. Wow. Because I thought that that Emperor's Spear guy was just very, very blue. Yeah, man, gosh, I, I, I tried to make him look paler, and it just, uh, I, I hate that blue so bad. There was, I mean, he was blue on blue, with more blue on the side. You're not and lying. there was kind of nothing to do with it, unless you had gotten, like, mad stylistic with it. Yeah, and your your Emperor Spear, man, the, the leather and the wood stock on your uh, bolter, man, it just looked great. Well, I appreciate that. I tell you, um, I did not have a lot of fun painting that, because... I'm discovering that if it is not a usable game piece in some way, I have a hard time getting charged up for it. Mm -hmm. I need it to be something that is going to be put on the table with some other dudes to do something. Put your passion in. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Just one random Space Marine feel, felt strange. And But was it good practice for maybe potential future Space Marines? No, I don't think it was any good no. at all. No, no, okay. Well, <laughs> not our strongest competition, folks. So, uh, as always, we will be. Do I will donate those two to our local hobby shop here, uh, where we is. They have to be getting tired of us bringing random models to put in that case. Right, it's almost full now, but <laughs> we will donate that to them, and then we will move on. So, uh, we probably won't have a challenge for a while because there's no names that really rhyme with any other faction soon, and also we're we're getting kind of burnt out. But uh, if you'd like. We can open our bits box now. Yeah, let's open up that bits box. By the way, you are now two and one in our podcast painting competitions. Yeah, I feel pretty great. So, about yeah, it. You, you're uh, you're running away with it. Uh, I'm trying. <laughs> Crack that bits box open. I got stuff to say. Is it about the competition? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, this week in the hobby, uh, the crusade has come for us all. 
the, yes. the, the adventures in the Pry and Nexus have really kicked off in our local community quite, uh, quite, quite in earnest now. So what I finally did was start a group chat, take matters into my own hands. Yeah. We've started a group chat. We're also going to be posting the standings of the various crusade forces. So it'll, it'll be what they're called, what faction they are, their record, and the amount of Blackstone Fragments, as that is the MacGuffin that we are seeking in this uh, Pariah Nexus campaign, uh, the number that we have. And uh, I've got that nearly ready for mass consumption. I'm so ready for it, because it, you've gonna done cool. some seriously good work on that. You really have. It's going to look cool, and it's going to be updated, and it's going to be a way for all of you to sort of keep up with who's who. And as we work our way through this, uh, this campaign, we will maybe have people on to talk about their crusade force and tell stories of the named characters that they have got that are, you know, doing wild stuff. Not going to lie, my boys need a win. Your boys do need a win. I received my first loss yesterday. I uh, played with the homie Dallas. He brought his Gene Steeler cult. And, uh, really? So a couple things. One, Dallas is often the sweaty metagamer. <laughs> Shout out to Dallas. Love Dallas. Uh, Get added. But also, he b- beca- because he has a tendency to want the good stuff to play in these tournaments, he buys a lot of armies. And when he buys an army, he buys a list that is quite quite uh, competitive, let's say. So he brought the Gene Stiller cult. He had never used them. They are not, they are not super great right now. And so that he thought these will be fun to play for the Crusade, you know, because it it's not Just really casual. It's not yeah. gonna matter. There you go, man. He brought them boys out and killed everything I had. Really? So he's got these dudes with these with these mines, and they're a once. Oh yeah. They're a once. They're a one shot weapon, but <laughs> there's four of them per unit of like ten dudes. He's got some stratagems where he can deep strike within three. <laughs> He can he can re-roll the hits and re-roll the wounds. I think if uh, he's on a, an objective, yada yada. He bring abominants. Uh, he did bring a few, but that, I mean they were fine. But it was it was these it was these demo tra- demolition the charges. demo charges. Guy, That's yeah. what it was. Okay, I submit to you that there needs to be some kind of limit of d six shot weapons. Period. Because it got real silly. All right. Uh, <laughs> I've, as, a, as a person who, fought, who has fought Gene Steeler Cult a couple times, they are very weird to fight if you're not careful. So I'm loving hearing your experience with this because it's giving me Vietnam flashbacks. Well, so, so here, here's my thing. Right? Shout out to Sam. Here, here, here's, my, here's my thing about all D, D6 shot slash blast things is that they break the math of the game. If it was a D12 system or something, then you could make the hit roll for these things to be something that could be balanced better. But the fact is, even if you hit on fives, even sixes, if you roll 60 dice, there's going to be a number of sixes. <laughs> Quite a number is possible. So, I mean, theoretically, I mean, you'd played, say 10. You've played me. You know that's not true. <laughs> I mean, I... Uh, <laughs> it, it's it, it's just a it's just a funny way for things to work, and yeah. I and I don't think that I don't think that it was the designer's intention for there to be like. I mean, I don't know. On one hand, space marines can take whole entire uh, squads of ten dudes with flamers, and then they've got you know d six times ten shots, and that's silly, especially when you're already skipping an entire step of the you know hit wound save siphoning format that the game is built around and uh i don't know he he dropped those dudes within three he's sp- he spent a cp for that he spent a cp to uh re-roll i believe it was the hit and uh then he deleted abaddon who had legionnaires and uh master of execution therewith Oof. and uh I mean, it was it was over with. Four up save. I didn't roll enough of them because I believe I had thirty to roll at two or three damage each. So it, I mean, it, they were toast. Nightmares. And I'm like, that doesn't that doesn't seem quite right. And what was crazy 
is Dallas, un- I mean, I obviously underestimated what those demo charges were going to do. Dallas also underestimated what they were going to do. He, he, <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, he pointed out halfway through the game, he's like, well, all your high toughness stuff is still alive, which was all that was left was like my Defiler, my Forge Fiend. And I said, bro, I don't think it would have mattered. I think, I think you've underestimated what they're doing with that volume of shots because uh, he subsequently did, you know, I would... I would turn my cannons on them, wipe the unit. They would then come back because that's what Gene Steeler Colts do. Well, when they come back, they now are technically a new unit. So they have those demo charges again. So that's a bit of a strange wrinkle too because, again, I'm not exactly sure that's how the designers meant for it to be. Was We're going to make the demo charges real powerful, but then we're only going to let you use them once. But if you take your wounds on the demo charge, guys, and then you regenerate them as you do at the end of every turn, then you're going to get new gem- demo charges. It's like, well, hold on. Those those are effectively not once per game in any regard. So I digress. But no, he subsequently started dropping them the, right next to my tank type stuff, my high toughness stuff, and it deleted them with savage prejudice. So uh, we had fun. We played a Pariah Nexus Crusade mission. I managed to roll lights out, the only time I rolled lights out all night, on my out-of-action test, and so none of my guys took any battle scars, which was great. Hmm. So. Well, that is a uh, completely different than how mine went. <laughs> uh, I fought the homie Craig in his death guard uh, with my orcs. I uh, used my requisition points to give myself 2,000 points of orcs going up against his death guard. Boy, he slapped the brakes off me, baby. He just went to town. Let me tell you. And then afterwards, I rolled so many battle scars. It was ridiculous. Oh, no. Some of my key units are now plus one to hit or minus one to their hits. And it's it's so bad. Well, remember, in your requisition strats, you can... Uh, you can recuperate somebody, so you can take a battle scar off for a requisition point. So, if there's any, if there's any vital unit, you, you know, I suggest you do that. I'm going to add some more stuff. My crusade force is up to 2,600 points or something like that, and I've had to add a couple of hundred other points oh, wow. to get my my demon prince with wings in and some odds and ends like that. At, at some point, I'm going to have my entire collection added to the Crusade Force. What else happened this week in the hobby? I played the homie Gabe in Blood Bowl, and I played that new vampire team. So it was vampires versus Elven Union. Like like you played it or you played against it? I played against it. Gabe played the vampires. I played my Elven Union, New England Patriots-styled dudes. We did not play on the 40K Fanatics custom turf because we played at the game store on the vampires' pitch which was cool looking Ooh. but uh it was a two to one victory for your boy uh the vampires were super cool they were super thematic um you ro- gabe had to roll to activate the vampires and if he did not pass the test then the vampires were required to feed on a thrall which is like a regular human dude a lineman essentially in the game uh at the end of their activation and at that point a injury roll is made on an eight on an 8-up, they're knocked out. On a 10-up, they're dead. And uh, it was ju- it was nothing but 11s and 12s on these poor boys. So <laughs> so he was just losing dudes in mass the entire game. And uh, I managed to score two touchdowns and uh, get the W. There you but go. We had, we had a huge amount of fun. It did not take very long. Neither of us had a book. There were a couple of instances where we had to just try to pull the rules out of out of the 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 deepest subcockles of our mind from previous readings because so I forgot my book and he forgot his uh, at that point we got done with that we proceeded to do hobby night there at the game store me and the homie Austin he painted a goblin I painted yet another judge dread citizen mob person and they turned out great it's an old lady holding a sign the sign says tax bad a sentiment close to my heart. <laughs> and then today, the Judge Dread from Warlord Games is where you get this stuff if you're interested in the Judge Dread game. Uh, Block War expansion showed up. So now, me and the homie Valerie are going to start playing the Block War, man. Wow. It's going to be fun. 
Man. There's a lot of extra rules, you a lot of randomness. Um, you don't actually have a Justice Department faction in the block war as a campaign. You have a block of citizens. I have a block ah. of citizens. They can be different styles of block, which gives different buffs and debuffs to your dudes, right? But then, when the battle starts, you draw these cards, and they can be judges that come on, and then you get to have a judge, or I get to have a judge. We all get judges. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. But that is pretty much everything that I have done in the hobby this week. In my bits box, uh, like I said, I've been playing that. I played that 2K Crusade game, and it was, boy, uh, I, I got beat. I got... I got humbled. I'm not gonna lie, it was it was bad. I, you know what? I hadn't been. You, you called me. I had not been. It was cr- so bad. You called me. Yeah, I had to see if you were okay. I, uh, I, the I mental tell you, health check. Yeah, I had not been trounced so so succinctly in quite some time myself. Yeah, and uh, it was it was a it was a reminder of what can happen to you. Yeah. And those games do happen. You just you get over it eventually. Just the important thing is. Don't be that guy who causes a scene, you know. Don't be that dude who make who the toxic player, you know. Be, just be humble, you know. Do oh, do you, you know what? Finish the game, shake hands, go home. That's hey, it. Yeah, you know what? I I say take it another step. Do better than that because uh, me and Dallas just kept making jokes. There you go. We we do we just kept making jokes about how these three armed, four armed dudes were just chucking dynamite <laughs> and i mean i was wily coyote just constantly blowing myself up it, it was it was absurdity and uh i've also been painting non-stop people have been hitting me up for a lot of commissions lately and i have been posting them on our socials you may have noticed that i finished that kairos fate weaver and it looks pretty pretty good it does indeed uh just so you all know you know your boy paints too right Hasn't it, hasn't not one of y'all hit me up to paint anything, <laughs> and I don't, and I cannot understand. Did you see my Cad Bane? Yeah, Did your you Cad see? Bane, that looked good, and it was posted on the socials yesterday. Everybody who's curious, that thing Come looks on. sweet. I can do more than just lightsabers, too, Man. and, and Judge Dredd. I'm uh, currently uh, working on another commission for somebody. I'm painting a couple scouts, a land raider. <gasps> and I am painting up the Dark Angels Chapter Master, Azrael. So, bane of my existence. New Azrael, old Azrael. New Azrael. Primaris. Uh, those of you who don't know, I hate, 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 hate painting Dark Angels. Don't know why. It is just, I can't. Urgh. That makes no sense to me. It's I, I know. It, it, you think it would be fine, right? Is it cloaks? Do you not like cloaks? No, I'm great at cloaks. It's just the, something about the green armor just doesn't. This, it's so black, and I, I, I it, it confuses my brain. Don't know how to paint it. It just drives me nuts. Got to get good. So uh, yeah, that's all that's been going on in my bits box. Um, there, you good to you good to close or? I think that I think that's all I've got. I oh. could I could think of more. I could pull out more, but I think that that is enough for one day. Oh, I got my Blood Bowl team assembled. Ah, well, black there's, orcs. There's more stuff. The black orcs. You've got orcs yeah. coming. From every direction. Looking forward to doing that, and apparently I need to buy a troll. Hold on. Hold on. Stop the presses. What? Breaking news. Breaking what? Breaking news. The old world has come for these streets Ooh, around these parts. The standoff... This has, is going to be a bits box episode, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. The standoff has ended in our local community, folks. What had happened was... The homie Austin has been championing the old world since it was... He did it? Since, since it was put away. Oh, he did it? He has done it. And then what happened is the homie Dallas bet somebody that if they bought some old world, he would get some old world. Yeah. So in one fail swoop, the homie Justin, who is also going to be playing Drakari in our crusade, uh, got the Bretonians... Austin got the Tomb Kings. Dal- uh, I mean, Dallas got the Tomb Kings. Austin has got goblins and orcs, and he's got dwarves. And you show me that goblin. It looks and good. And I'm waiting on the high elves. Whenever they come out, uh, I am not going to go to eBay and try to do all that. I'm going to wait for Games Workshop to give me something to buy, which is going to give me a little time. 
to get my money uh, up, but... You know what this means. The group chat has been created. Uh, you know what this means. The square bases have been ordered by many. Oh, no. And it's all about to go down. You know what this means. You're going to need more green boys. Boy, oh boy. Uh, you know that, that, that orc war boss on Wyvern has been calling my name. Have you seen that thing? I, I don't know if I have, but let me tell you... <sighs> All you need in life is more crunchy, more minis, mud looking metal orcs. Yeah, looks sweet. Looking like little blobs of mashed potato. <laughs> so let's uh, let's close up that bits box. Shut it down. That leaves just a fine amount of time for the main topic today. As the old world overtakes all before it, in the meta, in the. <laughs> in in our local gaming community. Yeah. <laughs> Which, if we're being honest, there's a couple of things that I'm going to point out today that are more macro level, big big picture points that are stuff that I think that I think you should think. But if you disagree, I encourage you to get in the comments on X, on YouTube, anywhere you can find us, and tell them tell tell me why I'm wrong, or call me names, or whatever you want to do. I am impervious to all of that sort of bullying. Put that, put a pin in that because we'll come back to it in a moment. But uh, our little local gaming communities, at the end of the day, are all that matter. We must remember, as a group of miniature hobbyists and war gamers, that these are tactile things, or at least they should be. The tabletop simulator crew is another is a discussion for another day, but. You kind of have to champion the games you want to play, and you've got to play the games that other people will play. There's that sort of push and pull there, right? Of what's hot in the streets and what you want to be hot. Sometimes you have to be Paris Hilton yourself and say, hey, old world's hot. Shout out to Austin. He, he looked like Paris Hilton in a way as he is arranged as a human as she may or may not be. But... That's part one. So just, just take that little nugget and put it in your shirt pocket, okay? Now, on to our main topic. And it's got to do with Age of Sigmar 4th edition. They're making a new Age of Sigmar. They're indexing Age of Sigmar. The La Skaven are coming back. The Skaven are coming back. The, um, the golden boys of the Stormcast Eternals are being fleshed out a little more in a direction that I think everybody appreciates, right? Really? Well, the idea that they're these... They're these uh, immortal, constantly re, uh, re, re reborn, uh, reconstituted warriors. Reincarnated. Right? Yeah, reincarnated. That's the word that I could not find. Um, and the sort of the the, the sort of uh, uh, mental toll that that should take upon what were once mortal men and yeah. women. I've I've watched the Black Talon. Uh, video on, or episodes on the Warhammer Plus, and it is pretty interesting to watch. You know, somebody who's essentially that super soldier. You know, kind of develop the memory issues and to what kind of toll it takes, battle to battle, nonstop, dying like that. It's interesting. It does feel a little bit like they're just doing Dante as an entire army. <laughs> that that is fair. That is, Dante, I love you forever. You're the best model in the 40k range. Fight me, anyone who f wants to dispute that. But that isn't quite my point. My point is, we've got this new version of Age of Sigmar coming out, and there have been casualties in the transition from third to fourth. The Beasts of Chaos are no more. What? An, an entire faction is not going to be in Age of Sigmar 4th edition. And you now, said beasts, not beast men? Beasts of Chaos. Beasts I think, of I think, Chaos. I think beast men may still be a thing okay. in some army. But but these are the big stompy boys. It but it's an it was an entire book. And it's not going to be in Age of Sigmar fourth edition. Now, I imagine they've got their reasons. Keep in mind in all of these points, and I don't know all that much about Age of Sigmar, but I will get to the point, I promise. Stick with me. Now, those models are going to be usable in uh Old World. So you don't have to go outside and light them on fire. <laughs> like your Colin Kaepernick signature Nikes. Oh boy! Shout out to 2012 or whenever that would have been. Man, 
Remember when everybody was doing that to their their old stuff because of legends? And this is what I get to. There are many, many models, over 100 models that are now going to be eliminated or made legend. And I've got some thoughts about that. So Who doesn't? So this does tie into 40K as well because there are rumors that some of your orcs are going to be made legend. Yep. How do you feel about that, Casey? Ooh, well, I will say that some things are very old. It just kind of makes sense. You know, the Kill Bursa tank is purely resin. It's outlandishly expensive, and nobody really uses it and hasn't probably used it for real in years. Um, there's things that came out in 2nd edition that, that could still be used and I'm fine with that, but then you've got characters, and I'm like, oh, man. Uh, if they make new characters, I'll be okay with it, but some of these old ones, man, I just I grew up with them. I read about them in the book. They're part of the reason I was inspired to get into Orcs for 40K, and to hear that they are going Legends, uh, man, it just kind of breaks my heart. So, oof tech. Yeah, so... Getting released and put into Legends. That's there, there, There's a couple things with that, right? Gosh. One, uh, Games Workshop is always going to make more characters. They're always, yeah. It's great. There, there, yeah. There, will be, there will be dudes to replace them or whole new versions of them to replace them. I think that with named characters... They're probably just moving away from resin. Well, th- yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's a, it's a plastic model kits are cheaper to make. Yep. And... You know, if they have any resin ones, they'd like you to buy those one more time real fast and sell them out for uh, whatever the premium of resin is. Nostalgia. Yeah, and then they'll wait a little while for everybody to get it out of their system, and then they'll bring it back like it's new, because here's a little secret, guys. They did that with the Space Marines. Here's a little secret, guys. This is a growing hobby. There's new people all the time. There are, yeah. I don't know who any of these legend characters are. Okay. Yeah, like a lot so, of these guys came out way before we got into it. You're right, right. So the next time that they bring back Ooftak or whatever, which they probably will, unless they have somebody to take his place who sort of makes more thematic sense. You know, who knows? Who knows? I don't. I, again, I know nothing. I don't know anything. Nobody's yeah. told me anything. I would correct him, ladies and gentlemen, but again, he he knows nothing. Ooftak, for all I know, has got problematic stories in some of those old books, right? And so it's like well, we we need to slide him out and slide a new guy in. He can be. Virtually the same. But also, uh, you can't just keep having characters and keep having characters ad infinitum because then they stop feeling like characters. They're not special. Uh, Blue Boy Space Marines have a good thing going where they just bring out a new captain all the time, except he's not an epic hero. He's not a named character. He may look like somebody from a book or whatever, but you run him as a captain. And that creates a nice variety of sculpt and thing because you need a bunch of captains. That it, somebody, somebody is yacht shopping for that idea, having come up with that. You see what I'm saying? Hitting you up, Space Wolves, with your like 11 characters. Yeah, see, some of those guys are not going to make it through the Codex, I promise you. Oh, yeah, they're very, very out of date. And I don't think that's that much of a bad thing. Now, on to the thing that's really got people bent out of shape is... That's fine for a character here and there. But with Age of Sigmar, a substantial amount of the current Skaven range are gone. Really? A substantial amount of the current Stormcast Eternals are gone. Wow. A lot of old stuff. A lot of stuff. Like, really old stuff. Stuffy stuff. Just stuffy stuff. All the stuff. I named the two chunks that make up the most of it, which is... The Skaven, the Stormcast, and then the rest of it, I mean, I, I looked over the pictures pretty quickly, but it was a lot of mushy, mash, they, they look like mashed potat, some of them, okay? And that's with the GW paint team having had a hand at them. That's fair. I wondered where they found some of these pictures, okay? Like I w- It would not surprise me if for the article, somebody had to get on eBay and find one of these jokers paint that up real quick and get us a picture so that people even know what we're talking about, right? Uh, Man, that kind of stuff doesn't work with Age of Sigmar. Here's here's the big point. I'm finally going to make my point 15 minutes into this topic. 
someone is screaming at their headphones. I started to say radio, but you guys are probably listening to us on headphones or possibly on YouTube at your laptop. I digress. The big part of this is the Stormcast and Skaven. Y'all was going to buy that new Stormcast and Skaven anyway. Fair. The, the internet is a loud and obnoxious place. You can find people like me talking this sort of nonsense. I have no notes. I just have what I think. And I am allowed a platform to spew it to you all. Because he bought the mic. Because I bought a microphone. But you're here and you're listening. So if you're one of these people that's charged up about, I can't believe they've taken my models away. This is, some, this is akin to thievery or some kind of unfair. I say to you, you were going to buy some new stuff anyway. We should look at this new edition of Age of Sigmar not with, oh man, they're changing stuff I like. Not with, oh man, they're taking away stuff I have. We should look at it as an opportunity because they're also going to change stuff that you don't like. And those could become things that you do like. Some of your model range, which let's be honest, guys, I don't know how your local community looks like, but ours, our Age of Sigmar model ranges look a little dusty. Some of those are going to continue to collect dust. Now, don't get rid of them. Don't get rid of them. You might need them for Old World. Exactly. Okay? Where, where they're old, chunky-looking, mashed potato-looking booties, all their pockmark, cellulite-ridden thighs Gross. are going are gonna to fit right in. I just want new rat ogres, people. You're probably going to get them. Exactly. But we should look at in this. plastic. We should look at this as a fine excuse to do the thing that we like to do most in this hobby, which is the acquisition of stuff. And things. And things. Because, oh, man. We love stuff and things. Oh, man. A few of these Stormcast models, these units. I mean, first of all, first of all, full stop. Anything that's a group of five, proxy that stuff. I promise you no one's going to care. However, if it's some dude riding a dragon, Ooh, yeah. you know what you're going to want? A fresh dude riding a dragon. Exactly. If the old guy is riding a dragon, the new guy is riding a griffin, let, let me, go, go and let me order up a griffin. It's the most fun thing we do is to get stuff in this hobby. And things. That's right. Number one. Get stuff. Number two, for me, look, I'm doing, I'm doing a top list. Number two, paint stuff. Number three, play stuff. Number four, used to be number two for me. Number four, build stuff. Now, number five, and way down on the list for me. Have fun. <laughs> no. Ha have fun comes through one through three. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even four. But number five is way down in the amount of fun. In fact, you could call it the bottom of the list. It's not even outside looking in. It's off the list. It's only a top four list, but those are bad. Number five is argue about this stuff on the internet. That's not fun to me. Mm. No, no, no. I stay off that stuff. There, there, there's a lot of discourse in corners of the internet that are less positive than your boys at 40K Fanatics, who are upset that they're making changes to the thing that they love. And they're very negative about it. And it's GW's messed it up again and that sort of nonsense. Now, I have got a lot of sociopathic tendencies. I might have said this uh, last week, briefly. But I tend to be quite impervious to people's negativity and things, and I do what I want to do. It's a, it's a really good trait for talking on microphones to no one, less good for any meaningful relationship. But uh, I could see how people that are like, awesome, fourth edition's coming, I'm going to jump on the train, could be turned off by this negativity. 
And you guys got to stop. You got to hype up the excitement. It's our duty to ourselves to hype this up a little bit because ultimately we want to play more games with our toys. Perhaps. Boys before toys. Perhaps. You get more people into this thing playing 4th edition, and let's just say, for the sake of discussion, that it's terrible. Well, all those new people that tried it have already bought stuff. You could take them back to 3rd edition and play it. Because, let's be honest, everybody's going to have all these uh, battle tomes laying around. They're no good anymore, but... For all the for all the hate and belly aching that GW gets for still selling books, books stay good. A hundred years from now, we're going to be able to take one of those books, crack that sucker open. Yeah, like aren't you? Uh, Mo- most of the pages are going to fall out, but we'll pick them up and we'll be able to play. Didn't you play a game of uh, first edition 40K or something like that not that long ago? I have not, but I do intend to. The homie yes. Austin has bought the reprint of that, but here but again, it's a direct reprint. If you go out and buy, if you if you've got an old one laying around, you could go play first edition. I'm We're all te- nerds. I'm telling you guys. We're all nerds. Just do it. Just cuz they're changing the stuff you like. Exactly. Does not mean that you won't like the new stuff. So, I urge you, 40K Fanatics podcast urges you to go forward with enthusiasm into all of this crap. Because at the end of the day, we are grown-ass men still playing with toy soldiers. So with our final Space Marines segment for today, I've got a good one for you. I've got a pretty, pretty good one for you. I've got one too, in fact. Okay, why don't you go first? Okay, my exclusive Space Marine segment of the day. Did you know that nearly any blocky uh, paint scheme on a Space Marine is probably a successor chapter? Oh, dang. I never thought about that. Yeah, that, that's what I observed in our March from a Crag painting contest. A unique paint style. Just any old blocky something. Belongs to something. Howling Griffins, Lamenters. Gosh, you're rocking my worldview right now. <laughs> Give me your real one. <laughs> my my real one. Wow, and it's kind of just flying out of my head right now. ADHD for you. So I'll just throw one out there. Um. Uh, nope, I won't give it to you. <laughs> We'll see you next time on see 40K next Fanatics. Time, Check it out on YouTube. Uh, comment. Tell me how wrong I am about all of this stuff. I'd love to hear oh, from you Oh, no, no, no. I, I just remembered it. No, it's too late now. Let's ne- see.